Hello viewers, it's Eric the Car Guy. Thanks for stopping by the shop today. Got something kind of unique and special for you. I recently replaced the power steering rack on my 2012 Honda Odyssey. And the reason I did that was because ever since I got it, there's been sort of a, a rattle or a vibration in the steering wheel whenever I went over bumps. And I've since replaced the power steering rack with a brand new Honda unit. I'll link that video down in the description. And all that rattling has gone away. And given that I purchased a new Honda power steering rack, well, it gives me the opportunity to take it apart because I didn't have to send it back as a core. So this is my power steering rack for us to take apart and see if we can figure out what went wrong. If nothing else, we get a chance to look inside a power steering rack and see what kind of stuff is on the inside of one. Want to see? Keep watching. I'm sure you've probably already noticed the oil leaks on the outside of the rack, and that is another reason I replaced it. But as I stated, since uh, I got the van, I believe it was in a collision. Well, I know it was in a collision before I bought it. And I think one of the things that may have happened is that there was some damage to where the pinion gear comes in contact with the rack inside here. So that's what I'm gonna be looking for. But I'm gonna start by removing these hard lines on the outside because, well, most of the business seems to be right up here in this area. So this is like the valving assembly and everything. So this is where the magic happens, if you will, in a power steering rack. And I'm gonna start by removing these hard lines. They're 14 millimeter. And I'm using this line wrench that you probably noticed. It's something I highly recommend for things like this. And it's also a thicker wrench, so it's, it can also be used as an open end. Either way, let's get these hard lines off. It looks like there's provisions for O-rings on the end of these. Ah, there it is. All right, so yes. There are O-rings here, thought so. So it looks like these are O-ring seals, which means that if you're replacing these or doing something with these, you don't wanna crank these down, just make them snug. Looks like these also had O-ring seals on them. I don't know if these are fittings or some type of valve, but let's remove them because we can. Another O-ring here. Ooh, spring just came out. So I think this is some type of valving. There's a small spring. Looks like it fits down inside here. It looks like the spring was seated inside what looks like another little valve here and this fitting. Looks like there's also some other stuff. So there's some valving in these fittings here. And it looks like there's a little washer in there as well. There we are. So there's that thin washer and what looks like some type of valving metering orifice, if you will. I'm just gonna loosely put this back together for now. Obviously, I'm not reusing it. Just to keep all that stuff together. It's like a similar setup inside of here, but no valving, just this orifice down here. Now let's get to the fun part. Let's take off this assembly here. From the looks of it, there are two 12 millimeters holding it in place. I don't see any snap rings or anything in here. Cool. All right, so this is a metal housing. There's a bearing you can see down in there. And this looks like all the valving, or a lot of the valving. So just to recap, this is how this sits on there. This is low pressure going back. This is high pressure coming in. So if we look at this, Okay, so I'm assuming the bearing's up here and then the shaft is gonna allow uh, some of the power steering oil to lubricate things. But these passages will send 
fluid through these lines that we just removed to help with the assist. Let's give you a closer look at that. You can see those small holes which allow flow through it to go, like I said, to those other places. So it's like another seal down here. I think to get this off, I'm gonna have to go here next. Before I go here though, I mentioned during that rack replacement video that it is possible to adjust the clearance between the pinion and the rack, and you do it right here. Um, I'm gonna remove this assembly because I'm gonna assume that this is pushing, well, it's pushing against the rack, um, and if I'm gonna try to remove this assembly, I don't want any pressure on it. So I'm gonna remove this big guy here uh, to see if that will help. Also, you get a look inside of, of basically what's going on when you make that adjustment. This is just a lock nut on the outside here. There's that. And this is just a 3 8 There's the inside of that. Yeah, it looks like just a metal plug. Here's what's underneath that plug. Looks like a spring. There's a little spring there. So this whole thing is pulling out. You can see that it's shaped in such a way to where when it contacts the back of the rack there, it applies tension. Interesting, right? It's really some spring tension, so they allow for some, do I dare call it adjustment? But this is the rack, so this, this is part of this piece here. So just so you know, when you, ooh, when you turn the wheel, well, we're seeing what left and right does now. When you turn the wheel, this is what's happening. So it's moving this rack in and out. Gross, right? Now, let's turn our attention to this. So this guy here is a 15 16 or at least that's what's fitting on it. Sorry, I'm using chrome. I just grabbed it. This looks like actually sort of a cap. And then underneath it, there's another nut. Maybe a 17? Nailed it. <laughs> I hope you saw that. That was drama. <laughs> Stuff went everywhere. All right. There will be a mess to clean up, but I don't mind getting oil on my table because it's metal and I think it will help prevent corrosion. So that's what's in here. Looks like maybe a seal. Oh, maybe a bearing. Maybe that's a support bearing, I'm thinking. I'm wondering if this pinion will come out now if I tap on this. And there it is. The pinion shaft. So when you turn the wheel, you're spinning this. Let's get this cleaned off and get a good look at these teeth because this is where I suspect my problem is, or was. Before I do, I will show you this seal that's coming off. These look like the same type of seals that I find in automatic transmissions, these seals here. In fact, this looks very similar in a way. Here we are after cleaning, looking very closely for some damage somewhere. You can certainly see where the teeth are coming into contact with the rack. but I don't see anything that jumps out and says, here I am. All right, well, let's get the rack out and give it an inspection. Maybe there's a tooth or something in there that might be damaged that we can clearly see. 
Yeah, there's going to be something in one of these ends. I'm guessing that guy right there. I'm going to go get an old screwdriver and see if I can tap this out. There's a little slot right here. Maybe that's like a something locking that. I'm going to try spinning this first. Here's one of my old beat up screwdrivers that I often use for stuff like this. I can say this, Honda Power steering fluid is very slippery. <laughs> like, very slippery. Something just clicked out here. This, I was wondering why that window was here. I wonder if I just turn it back the other way. Yep, see how that's coming out now? So that's out, interesting. And this, you see that little hook? I'll look right here, there's a small hole that I hope you can see. Is that hole? That is what this little hook goes into. So imagine you put it in, you twist it around, it locks this in place. Now I just gotta figure out how to get this plug out of here. I don't think it's ferrous, but I'll try a magnet. Ah! That's the key right there, just a magnet. That's sort of an end cap. Like I was saying, this will go into this hole. And you can turn it in, and that will sort of lock it into place. That's what holds this in, is this guy right here. Let's see if we can get this guy out. Looks like a seal or something down in there. More fluid. <laughs> there we are. Look at that. Ooh, there's some metal bits. Uh, you see those? There's something going on in here because, like I said, that's metal bits on that seal, if nothing else. Here's the business as far as what comes in contact with that gear. I'm going to go clean this up in the parts washer, and then we'll come back and have a look. Back from the parts washer. Once again, I don't really see anything that jumps out and says, hey, look at me. I'm broken. So, but this is the length of your steering, well, at least in as far as a Honda Odyssey is concerned. And uh, this is pretty much how most rack and pinions are put together. If you see something, holler at me. Like something that might have been chipped or anything. All right, well, this seal in this center is, is stationary, but this one moves around on this side. And this is the seal that was on the outside of the rack here. And then we'll get a look at the one on the other side. Looks like there's a hole there for, I'm not sure. There's one up here also. And I think I know what that is. So this equalizes from one side to the other through the center of the shaft. So there's one hole there and one hole there. So I'm pretty sure that that's, up, that's what that's for. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. All right, we're left with not a whole lot. This is kind of light now. There's the inside there. Here's looking through the other side. Once again, I don't, I don't see anything that says, and the only other thing I can think of is perhaps something up in this area here. I'm allowing that shaft to move more than it should, perhaps. But just to give you the basics of the overview of what's happening. So when you turn the wheel, these guys are meshed together. So you turn the wheel and that's what happens. So these gears mesh together and allow you to turn left and right. I'm curious now if like maybe one of these bosses where, oh, I can take this whole valve assembly off here, it looks like, because there's a snap ring here. Now that I've said it, you want me to do it, right? 
There's also a pin right there, it looks like. That may locate it there. All right, let's see if I can get the snap ring up off of here. These are the pliers I'm using. Cool, right? It's just a neat little piece of machining. Another seal right there. So pressure passes through these individual holes in these, between these rings here and uh, sends it where it needs to go to give you the assist. But sadly, I can't really find anything I can point to and say, there it is. But if nothing else, we got a cool video of taking apart a power steering rack, right? This may be where the problem lies. So where the shaft goes through here, there are two bearings. There's one at the top and one at the bottom. It could just be that these bearings were a problem. I might have found the culprit. I think this bearing, it's stiff and a little notchy. And as evidenced by all the leakage in this area, I think something was loose in here, um, allowing the seals not to hold as well as they should. You can use a brass drift punch. That's my guy. Actually, it moves. Oh, there it is. There's that notch. It's like a little catch. Should be smooth, but it's not. I can, I can feel it, just sort of a little bit of a rattle. So if I'm gonna guess at why my steering column was rattling a little bit over bumps, I'm gonna say it's this bearing right here. Wish I could convey that to you, but yeah, a little bit of pressure on this and you can feel like a little notch. You might be able to hear it. No, but I can certainly feel it. So, this guy right here, it's a Koyo bearing. You might be able to look this up, it's hard to say. 1009, that's the only number I see, but it's a Koyo bearing. But I definitely feel something in this. That one's a little rough, but I don't feel the same roughness that I felt in the other one. I suspect the other one more than this one. All right, well now it's completely taken apart. I find this kind of stuff really interesting to see how they machine it, especially something really complex like a power steering rack. I mean, you've got all those pressure valves, you've got you know, a lot of uh, precision machining and some seals and stuff like that. But if you want to rebuild yours, well, now you know how it comes apart anyway, and hopefully this video will help you. If not, and you were just curious about what was inside a power steering rack, I hope my job is done. Anyway, I will post links in the description to other videos like when I took apart power steering pumps and other kinds of stuff. Uh, so related videos, tools, and you know whatever else that I can put down there to inform you. Also, if you have automotive questions outside of this video, I ask that you head to airatthecarguy.com. I'll link that in the description for you as well. Thank you so much for watching today. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the video with the world. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much again, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.